late last summer I was hiking in a local park and I came across a pretty good sized mullein plant. Uh, it was probably, the stalk was probably over six foot. It was certainly taller than me and way down at the base it was better part of an inch in diameter. It's would have yielded a stalk that was way too big for me to do any hand drilling with but I cut it down anyway and brought it home with me, let it dry out and kind of looked at it for a few months to decide what I wanted to do with it. And recently I kind of picked up the project again. It's been in my basement for about a year and I decided what I was going to do is try to make a, a bow drill spindle out of it. And it turns out in the end it's, it's worked really quite nicely but it took me a few attempts to, uh, to get it just right. The biggest issue to deal with when it comes to mullein is that the wall thickness is really tiny. It's just a real thin wall and it's easy to crush. So this is a, a piece of fatwood that I harvested earlier this summer and I, I started pushing down on the top of my mullein stalk and I realized what was happening was the, the walls were kind of curling in and, and crushing. I needed to come up with a, with a better option. And what I did was I, after some thought, I cut myself a piece of goldenrod, anything would have done, a dowel rod or stick or anything that's kind of straight, but I had some, uh, I had some goldenrod. I cut a piece that was about three inches long and I cut tapers on either end. On the longer end, or the longer tapered end, I just kind of acted like a drill and kind of pushed it in about two inches like that. And I carved a more gentle cone-shaped taper on the top. And that just fits in the divot of my thunderhead like that. And then to reinforce it all, I took some artificial sinew and whipped it, made a real big, real thick whipping where I wanted it to seat so that it wouldn't go in any further than that. See that and then to reinforce the walls of the mullen itself I whipped on some artificial sinew eh, goes down about an inch on the stalk and then it all goes together just like that and the thunderhead rests on the top like that when you're bow drilling or hand drilling with these uh, wildflower stalks it's best to use gentle pressure when I first started playing with this I was using way too much pressure not only would it bind up and stop spinning but I risked crushing it on the bottom it would start curling in and crushing so gentle pressure is what you need uh, barely more downward force than is required to just keep it balanced in the uh, in the fireboard Another thing that I needed to do, since the, the sidewalls are really thin, I couldn't use a, a really tight fire bow. I needed something that was taut and grippy, but not too terribly tight, because I didn't want it to constrict it and crush the, the, the stalk. And what I ended up with, after some thought, was, was this. Probably other ways to do it. This is one of my fire bows that I like. And on this end, I've just got a, a Celtic button knot and that slips into this notch up here at the top. And then what I do is I just wrap it one, two, three, four times like that. And down on the bottom end of my bow cord, I've tied a, what I call a slippery figure eight knot. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But then I slip that into the notch at the bottom of my bow. And what that gives me is a taut, but not terribly tight bow cord. And the multiple wraps on that stalk give me a lot of friction and it rolls very nicely. Uh, one thing, I found that I need to do is bow at a slight downward angle. If I, if I accidentally bow upwards, 
these wraps as I move back and forth will tend to spin on top of themselves and kind of bind things up. So what I need to do is bow at a slight downward angle. But anyway, those are the tricks I figured that I needed to do. I had to reinforce the stalk itself, put in a little plug with a tapered top, multiple wraps so as not to crush it, bow at a slight downward angle, and use gentle downward pressure. Once I kind of dialed all of that in, this started working like a charm. Uh, embers come fast, easy, because you're using gentle force. It's not exhausting. Um, I've really had a lot of luck with my wildflower hand drill and bow drill stalks over the past year, so I uh, highly recommend you give it a try. So I'm done talking. Let me spend a few minutes to get set up, and uh, we'll see if we'll make a little bitty fire. Back in a second. Alright, let's give this a try. I've got a mullen spindle, a cottonwood fireboard, my fatwood thunderhead, and I'm going to attach my spindle to the bow using a loose multi-wrap technique. And I've previously adjusted that knot so that this is taut but not terribly tight. Let's give it a go. Remember, use gentle pressure. Barely more pressure than is required to keep the spindle balanced in the fireboard. Nice big ember. These wildflower stalks may nice, make nice big embers very easily with almost no effort, but you've got to be gentle. My uh, bird's nest is some uh, fuzzed up jute twine and uh, some cedar shavings and some thistle down that I found on my walk yesterday. go. It's only 94 degrees in my backyard today, so this is a little bit hot. But this mullen spindle works great. All the wildflower spindles that I've worked with recently have been great. You just got to be careful and use gentle pressure. Thanks for watching. So let me show you now how I tie my slippery figure eight knot for my uh, bow drill. You just make a bend. And to make a regular figure eight knot, you would kind of twist it over. And run the running in through 
and you can see the figure eight there. If I pulled that tight, that would make a figure eight stopper knot. But I want to make a slippery figure eight knot that I can adjust from time to time. And so what I do is I simply make a bend or a bite in my running end, like that. And stick that up through and pull it all down taut. And that's my slippery figure eight knot. You can adjust that to make your bowstring taut, but not too tight. And it's easy enough to adjust. And if you want to change it later on, you just pull it loose and move it to wherever you'd like the next time. It's just that easy. That's a slippery figure eight stopper knot. Handy little thing.